Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Mishta with Months of Madness. <laughs> yeah, I've got Months of Madness. It's been a minute since I got to do a video. Um, well, today the madness started out with the wind outside. And so we're back in here with the bad lighting. So I apologize for that. It keeps fading in and out. So I apologize. And uh, But I get to keep my cool anime hair though. So and uh, when I lean in, you can tell it's really blue. <laughs> but I love making my hair up in my anime. Um, anyway, so, um, <laughs> whew, it's been a minute. I've been trying to do this video for the whole month of May. Um, it's hard because I keep getting emotional and stuff, so I'm going to give it another go and try not get to, to get so emotional, but to let you guys know why it's been a minute since I got to do a video. Whew. Okay, first of all, I want to say happy long-term Survivor Day. That was a couple days ago. I would have done a video on that day, but I've been frantically looking for a job, and I was at a job fair. And so the whole long-term survivor, <laughs> long survivor day um, kind of escaped me this year. And um, I do still have my two years ago, I got my, my ring. Okay, let's put it away so that. And it's a U equals U. I don't know if you can really see it. U equals U. And I got my ring a couple months ago, or a couple years ago. And that was to help celebrate the uh, my 23 years of surviving. And now it's 24. Woo! But anyways, um, I'm not going to do a vi long video about that. I want to let you guys know uh, why it's been a couple months since I actually did a video in the first place. Whew, okay, not getting emotional, just going to state the facts. <laughs> All right, so um, I've been having a lot of uh, issues going on, like a lot of anxiety and depression and um, a lot of insecurities. Uh, I was worried I was being stalked. I had an incident happen at work where um, I was scammed by someone claiming to be my boss and asking me to do a bunch of things for him and um, then finding out it wasn't really my boss, I guess. So, um, it was a huge ordeal. Uh, that was back uh, the last day of May, or excuse me, the last day of March. So it's been a minute for me to recover I've been trying to come to the realization that I am not just an, an idiot. I did fall for a scam, but that doesn't mean I'm stupid. Um, hey, Rox. Um, it doesn't mean I'm stupid or naive. Um, it just means I have belief in people and that they're going to try to maybe do the right things. And, and, in that, and, and then that would mean I was doing the right things. Um, my boss even tried to call the police on me. Well, he did call the police on me. Um, they came, they looked at my phone, the screenshots of the conversation, and they said, has your boss looked at this? And I said, no, he refuses to. And they said, well, we're going to make him look at this because you are a victim more so than he is because you're having to pick up all the pieces now. And he just had to waste a few, a few hours of his day figuring out what happened and that's it and so um, the police showed him the phone and all the screenshots which I was thankful I did I took um, but when the conversation went from doing things for a surprise inspection and making sure things were all on the up and up and like all good to code um, or whatever it is you call for inspections <laughs> um, and the person went from doing, you know, asking me to do all those things that would be regular for work to asking me to do uh, uh, above and beyond duties for making sure the inspection would go over well, uh, which I was, thought I was doing the right thing by helping out. Um, I always want to be a team player. And to me, that means, you know, doing whatever the boss asked you to do. And um, needless to say, uh, the police did put in the report that I was a victim and he was a victim. 
So there was no, you know, no charges, no nothing, which is really wonderful because he was going to try to put me in jail. Um, nothing was stolen. Nothing was lost. Nothing happened. <laughs> you know, so, um, but I did lose my job. I ended up losing my bank account and um, because the person got all my identity and everything and uh, the person uh, scammed me out of all these things because I was thinking it was my boss that I was working with and that he was going to give me this big bonus and all these things. Um, he didn't once tell me to not have the security guard with me. I told him repeatedly I was keeping the security guard with me the whole time that I was working extra. And he said, gladly, I will give you guys both bonuses. Um, and I even showed the security guard that he said that. So I'm like, dude, I'm, key, I'm screenshotting this. So he, <laughs> you know, and come to find out that the boss said it wasn't him. So um, thank goodness, though, that I screenshotted all the, the I took screenshots of all the, the conversation because that's the only thing that saved my ass, <laughs> my butt. Um, <laughs> Whew. And um, since then, I've been trying to work through all this emotional trauma, in a way. Um, I don't like being a victim. I will try to do anything to not be a victim. Uh, and this put me right in the victim spot. Um, it put me in a very vulnerable space. I really thought that this person was stalking me after. In fact, when I told the situation to my son, first of all, he said, uh, Mom, this is a real scam. People really do these things. They will find out your, your real phone number. And they will call your workplace or, or something like that and say that they're a person trying to get a hold of you and ask for your information. And when you're not giving up your personal information, they will call you on your other phone or message you on your real phone and already have your phone number. And then they'll act like there's someone else that knows about this person calling. And so then right there you believe that it, that they're actually a person that you know or someone that you can trust, you know, because they know more about the situation than what's going on, you know, than what you would think. So anyways, there's you, there's actually YouTube videos, I guess, about it. And I think it's their warning of people how, how they'll get scammed and that, like, people will have your personal phone number. And so don't fall for it. And, um, and they'll be, they can be just saying that they're your boss or your friend or whatever. And it sucks because if somebody's messaging you, you don't really know who that is. You know, I've had plenty of my friends message me, Hey, I lost my phone. Give me your contact information again. And it's on like messenger or whatever, or, you know, or even just a blank text. Hey, <laughs> give me, you know, this is so-and-so, put me in your contact number. I got a new number now. And it's like, okay, is this really you? Or am I putting some stranger in my contacts now? You know, or do you really, it's really not that person. You know, so it's, it's very confusing. I was devastated because I lost my job. I felt like an idiot because I fell for that scam. And I mean, where you're trying not to give up your personal information and then all of a sudden you feel good that, you know, someone you know is calling you going, hey, did you get the scam thing or did this thing happen? And, you know, you're like, yeah, and I didn't do it. And they're like, oh, good, you know, and it's like, or, oh, well, it's okay that they're not a scammer and you can go ahead and do that or whatever. And it's like, okay, they know about more of the situation. They must be who they say they are. And it's like, no, <laughs> they're causing the situation and that's how they know about it. So, whew, I have to stop feeling like I am not worthy for another good job. I have to slow down and just breathe and try not to feel like I am less of a person because I was so down for the team and trying to do my job as best I could. I had to stop feeling like I wasn't doing a good job because I really was trying to do a good job. I was trying to go above and beyond like the, the boss was asking. And um, so it was very traumatic for me. It was very traumatic a couple months here. And um, I'm really trying to just recover still. And at first, I didn't think it was going to bother me. I'm just like, whatever. I was just freaked out over the fact that I thought somebody was stalking me now because this person was talking about my tattoos. They started talking about my personal stuff. And this was, like, not personal, like, numbers and, and information like that. I had already talked to them about stuff like that. And 
it was so weird how much stuff they already had on me that it was it felt like I was being stalked. It felt like somebody was personally attacking me for some reason. And it was scary. It was very, very scary. And uh, my son even said, please be careful. You know, this seems like somebody was targeting, targeting you specifically, whether it was to get to your boss or whether it was to get to you and get you fired. It was specific and it was towards you and it wasn't cool and it was malicious. And even though, you know, I, I did the right things and didn't have anything get stolen and didn't put anything in jeopardy as far as like my, my consideration of, you know, I, I, I mean, I put myself on a, on a limb for my boss, but I've done that for other bosses and, and same situation, but, um, <laughs> or very similar, you know, so, um, I really thought I was going and being an extra good team player. So I got to stop being uh, feeling like I was uh, doing anything wrong. I was totally a victim and I have to remember that. And it's been really hard to come to grips with that. Like I said, I really hate being a victim. <laughs> and, um, and lately it's just been really tough not to feel like that. I've been having really bad bouts of depression. Um, I've been, the only way I've been getting out of it is to dance. I put on some good dance music and just dance and have a good time and try to dance away the blues and the depression and the anxiety. I mean, the, uh, Saturday when I was trying to go to that job fair, I was so anxious and so freaking out. I was, it took me an hour and a half to like actually work up the whole being able to go, having a good outfit, having the right things to do, right things to say. And then when I got there, I had my resume, I had everything all good. And even though everything was all good, I still had to fill out applications and I forgot to bring my cheat sheet of dates. And I froze up and couldn't think of dates. My back started freezing up, which that was from my injury a long time ago. And that, you know, that was the reason why I was on disability for two years. And so my back just started freezing up, which it's been having issues since the last surgery, but it's just cause you know, I gotta get some more, uh, get my exercise pattern down or my exercise routine down, but still it's like, and I'm going to be doing physical therapy, but at the same time, it's like, I could barely write. I was freaking out. I was in so much pain that day. I don't know if it was more stress induced or if it was just that I woke up feeling that way, but I had been having really bad issues with my neck for quite a few weeks now. And it's been really freaking me out. It's been actually since my last surgery and I've been bugging the doctor about physical therapy. So I'm finally getting it. But, um, it's been really tough. You know, it's been really, really tough not feeling like a victim plus having the back being her on top of it. I'm like, I really thought I got through this already. I really thought I was past this. You know, I'm not on disability anymore. I'm not, I got off of that a long time ago, you know? And so I've been just working and doing a good job. And then, you know, it, I thought I was doing a really good job. I thought I was going to get to do physical therapy and work just to the, the two days a week and everything was great. I had still had my great job. And, and then that happened. And so it like kicked me in the chest basically and knocked me down for a minute. And I have to say it did, it knocked me down and, um, it was hard to get back up. It was, it's been hard. And, um, I'm just terrified that it's almost too late to even be picky about a job anymore. Uh, but I really need to be because there's, I, I can't do, but you know, certain things. I mean, I can't work out in the sun all day anymore. I can't do all the digging anymore. I can't do half of that kind of stuff, but I am learning a lot more other things that I can do. And so I'm trying to improve on those things and be like, okay, I can still be in the cannabis industry if I really work hard and have to do a little bit more of uh, desk and functioning in the manuf manufacturing part, <laughs> you know, instead of the growing part. And, um, I'll leave that for my gardening at home. <laughs> and, um, so I've been really trying to turn things around and think positive and use my extra knowledge that I'm learning off of YouTube videos about other, you know, the measurements and how cannabis has to be accountable. And I'm hoping that I can go more towards that kind of job and figure out how to just get through this. 
it has been really, really hard getting through this. And so I've been so stressed out. <laughs> and it really sucks because the whole month of mental, you know, mental awareness month, I was losing it. <laughs> I was literally freaking out and going through so much depression and just panicking and thinking somebody could be following me that was stalking me. And it was crazy. It was crazy. I was making sure I triple locked on my doors. I, you know, made sure that I had, I was keeping in contact with people and making sure they knew if I didn't contact them within a certain amount of time to come check on me or whatever. And yeah, I was pretty freaking scared at first. I was really freaking scared. And I did not know if somebody was really stalking me or not. And um, cause they knew a lot of personal information about me tattoos and everything and I mean granted there are a few pictures on my Facebook that have some tattoo pictures but if that's your profession then you're gonna search those things you're gonna find those things out and I may not have a stalker but I definitely had someone that was scamming me so ah, it has been a crazy couple months of madness <laughs> I'm just saying madness madness everywhere <laughs> Ah, but, um, yeah, I am looking for a new job now and I'm going to try to stay in the cannabis, cannabis industry. I really got to talk off. This has been a really hard video. I'm just saying, uh, but yes, this has been definitely one of the hardest videos I've ever done. It's, I've been doing it for more than a month now the whole month of May, literally, I've been trying to do this video over and over and over. And, um, I'm hoping this is the time. <laughs> this is the time that I can keep up. Ah, but yes, I was scammed. I lost my job. It has been a lot of crazy madness and it has sucked. And I am trying to keep my head up now. I am doing the best I can at not kicking myself and feeling like an idiot. A lot of people have gotten scammed in this world a lot and technically a lot of people say I shouldn't have lost my job over it no matter if I was sitting there in tears going I know it's, I understand if you want to fire me even if I was doing that because I was in distress and freaking out it technically they should have gone okay we want to put you on probation we want to make sure that you understand that you can't have that kind of stuff happen you have to call triple check and double check with other managers and whatever else and make sure that this is really what's going on that way, if for some reason it is someone scamming that is in within the company, they'll get busted too. And so, yeah, I've got to just really, I, I should have, you know, been talked to like that. And I just got to really be monitored. But that's not what happened. I lost my job. I lost my dignity. I lost my confidence. I... I lost my identity. <laughs> uh, it sucked. It really sucked. It sucked more for me even. But who knows? I, I have no idea what other repercussions that happened that had happened at the store because of it. But one, I hope that they have a lot better security and a lot better of a situation for bud tenders and security to be able to easily contact each other and know what's going on, you know? and be able to have a more understanding of what things are going down in the business, you know, what kind of scams and what kind of links they're going to. I'm hoping that they're telling this to the new people and telling them how the links that people are going to to scam people at that store. I don't know if it's happening at any other store, but it's happening there <laughs> and it sucks. But um, yeah, I'm trying to laugh about it now and just feel as good as I can. <sighs> Just breathe, right? <laughs> and there's Rocky in the back. My baby. He's helped me get through so much. You don't even know. All the cancer surgeries. This. Oh, I love him so much. He's just been amazing. <sighs> okay. So I think I made this video quite long enough. Um, <laughs> oh, I hope everyone didn't struggle as much as I did or any harder to any of Mental Awareness Month or any other time. Um, like I said, I really wanted to get a video out of mental awareness because I was going through so much mental stress and anxiety and just 
it was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. And um, I don't want to get emotional right now. But I really wanted to be able to reach out to all of you way earlier than this. And um, I'm not going to beat myself up over it, though. I'm getting a video out now. I'm letting you guys know what happened. It's okay to have weird things like that happen. And it's okay to feel vulnerable. And it's okay to have a good heart and be able to have people take advantage of you sometimes. You don't necessarily have to let them get take advantage of you, but it's okay to have a good heart to where people would feel like they, sh they want to. And um, you just gotta learn ways to protect yourself. And that's what I gotta learn. That's what I'm taking away from this. I gotta learn better ways to protect myself, but still have that good heart. So that's what I'm taking away from this. <laughs> and it's gonna be a good thing. So I'm learning. And I learn every day, and I hope you all do too. <sighs> okay, so that being said, I am going to try to get out of here and um, go play with my dogs and feel good. <laughs> so thanks again, for everyone, for watching. I really appreciate all of you, and um, I really hope that everyone has had a good spring and um, and that's their mental space is doing well and uh, i really wish that on everyone because it can be tough sometimes so uh thanks again for watching everyone and uh please like comment i love the comments i really do and um and ring the bell if you want to know when i do another video because there's a lot of madness <laughs> <sighs> okay y'all <laughs> have a peaceful day <laughs>